Hi, my name is Robert Walutis. Uh, this is a technique peek for the hand therapy team. Today we're going to talk about intrinsic tightness. So this is a real important issue when people can't make a composite fist. Is it the PIP joint that's tight versus intrinsic tightness? So if you zoom in here, what I do is I first I check the uh, PIP joint with the MCP slightly flexed and I flex the joint as far as I can. You can see here she's got about 110 degrees of PIP flexion. So that tells me the joint is loose. And then to check the intrinsic, and this is what most people don't do, they take it in hyperextension, but you have to take it all the way back in complete hyperextension. And then you need to flex and see if the tightness. You can see the difference there now. Her PIP joint gets tight right at about uh, 85 degrees versus let the slack out of the muscle, 110 degrees. So then when I stretch them, and this is what I find a lot of therapists don't do, they just slightly extend the MCP and then they stretch down. It doesn't stretch the intrinsic. You have to go to the end range. And some people have a lot, like this person right here. So bring it to the end maximal ext hyperextension of the MCP, and then you're going to bring down the uh, PIP joint. You can leave the DIP out of it. They should, You know you have it right when they feel the stretch, right along their lumbar colon, their interossei muscle. That's what you're looking to stretch. If, you, if they feel it there, you know you got the right muscle and you're gonna hold that stretch and, and even teach them how to do that as a home exercise. Um, the other thing, if you come over to the top here, I like to do is if someone has like a little ulnar drift, they may be tight, more tight on the ulnar intrinsic side. I'll bring them more radially. I'll hold them more radially and rotate them like this and get a nice ulnar side of intrinsic stress or a radial, if the tightness is on the radial side, which is not as common. The last thing I want to show you is the oblique retinaculum. If they can't get that last, that D, you're having trouble with like the end DIP range, sometimes it's the oblique retinaculum ligament. It's very similar to the intrinsic stretch where you have to hyper, this one you have to hyperextend the PIP joint and then passively flex the DIP joint, okay? If you have slight flexion of the, of the uh, of the PIP joint, you're not going to stretch your oblique retinacular ligament. You got to hyperextend and then flex. Okay, so hopefully those two techniques will help you achieve full composite flexion and stretch the correct issue that's tight, whether it's the joint or the uh, muscle. Thank you.